Ópera apresenta Expogestão Boa tarde, muito obrigado por la invitação a este evento tão importante, muito agradecido com, com toda a organização de Espogestado por darnos a oportunidade de vir a contar a história de transformação de Medellín. Me desculpo porque não hablo português, então vou fazer minha apresentação em inglês para os que se queiram poner o traductor. So I'm going to change to English. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I'm gonna start my presentation by doing just a simple question. Have you ever wondered that you really need to transform yourself? Sometimes in our, in our lives, we realize that we need to change something. We need to change the direction because we're not happy with the things we are getting in our life or in our jobs, or in this case, in our city. So I'm Santiago Espina, Director of Communications and Marketing from Ruta N. Ruta N is located in Medellín, Colombia. Medellín is a city, the second largest city of Colombia. We have 2.5 million inhabitants in the city and 3.7 million in the metropolitan area. Medellín started growing very fast during the, during the last century. From 1928, uh, it was growing fast. As we are a valley, we are surrounded by mountains. The city uh, had very, a lot of challenges in expanding the city because most of the, uh, of the neighborhoods uh, were, had to grow up the hills. We faced a very important challenge in the, in, uh, during the 70s because it was some kind of violence in the countryside of Colombia. So a lot of people running, out, running away from the violence, they went to live in the cities, and the cities weren't prepared for welcoming all these new inhabitants with the government services such as public utilities, education, health services, and so on. Medellin was an easy still based on traditional economy, manufacturing was um, a, a very important city for textile industry. During the, dur even during the Second World War, some companies of Medellin were producing textiles for the American Army and Navy. But Medellin can't be a manufacturing uh, capital for international trade, why? Because Medellin, as you saw, is in the middle of the country. We are a, a little bit far from the port. So it's cheaper to send a container from Cartagena to Miami than sending the same container from Medellin to Cartagena, which is one of the most important ports in Colombia. So we were facing some very serious challenges in terms of, of social and violence uh, challenges and problems during the 80s and 90s. 30 years ago, Medellin, when I was younger, when I was uh, doing school, high school, this was the headlines that I used to see in the newspapers of my, of my country and my city. Life is defeated, uh, another car bomb, uh, narco mass massacre and killings, this kind of stuff, my generation, we grew up seeing this kind of information. We got even to be the most violent city in 1991, with 381 murders per uh, each 100,000 inhabitants. That was like a very, very high um, figure. But as I said, some things started to change. What kind of things? These are the poor barrios in Medellin. It's very similar to the favelas here in Brazil. As I told you, these people started to build their own houses up the hills and up the mountains, and it wasn't planned. So it was a very big challenge for the city to take all the services for them. 
the people who live in these favelas or these barrios, they work usually in the other side of the city. The side, south, uh, the side part of the city is like the developed and, and where the rich people and when the industries are, and this is in the, located in the north side of the city. So the people who live here, they had to take like three, four uh, autobuses to go to the work and spend a lot of money. So we started to innovate in order to connect these people to the rest of the city. So one of the first applications for uh, public transport of these kind of cable cars was done in Medellin. You see these kind of cable cars in uh, ski resorts or uh, uh, for tourism, but not for public transportation. These cable cars are connected to the main metro lines in, in Medellin. This is a station, and not only because of the, of the mobility and connectivity that this brought to the city, but also because this uh, station intervened like the, the public space of, of, the, of the barrio. This is Santo Domingo station. So the people, I've been there since uh, the beginning. It was in uh, 2004. Uh, you can see the growth, the growth the inhabitants of these barrios, of these favelas, started to open shops, um, restaurants, souvenir, and nowadays the, the tourist people from all the world is visiting uh, the favelas. Closed space converted into public spaces. Uh, this is a, um, a story. Um, this was a, like the city dumpster with all the trash was put there. In the 70s, they closed the dumpster and people started to live there, building their own houses out of this uh, trash. And because it was a dumpster, it had a lot of gas there. It was very inflammable. And they had a lot of uh, fires. The worst fire was in 2007. And the municipality moved the people to social housing. And they transformed this dumpster into a very big garden where the people who used to live there, they work there, they grow plants, they grow food, and it's one of the most touristic places in Medellin. Violence, of course, uh, was one of the problems, the worst problems that we had in Medellin, but we changed that into hope. This picture, you can see here, there's these electric stairs, uh, is an innovation as well, because you see stairs in shopping malls, but you don't see stairs for public transportation. So these stairs have like roof, so the people can transport themselves, they don't get wet when it rains, and it has impacted the life of a lot of people who live there. Even the people intervene, uh, they have the initiative to intervene these public spaces with graffitis that are art, and now we have like the transformation tour in Medellin, uh, in Comuna 13, which was one of the most violent favelas 30 years ago. Now is a um, center of transformation. And the people all over the world acknowledge this transformation and they are taking tours and going there. In 2013, we were awarded with the City of the Year Award uh, by City. We were fi finalists with Tel Aviv and New York, and we won. So we were very happy to be in that group of very well-known cities for its innovation. And 2016, we were awarded with the Lee Kuan Yew uh, prize, which is kind of the Nobel Prize for the cities because of the innovation based on, on, on the people. Now, 2018, remember that I told you that Medellin was, got to be the most violent city back in 1991, okay? Now, we used to have 2,081 murders per uh, 1,100 inhabitants, 100,000 inhabitants. Now, we have just 24. Even one is, is bad, but I mean, uh, is 90% less violent murders than 30 years ago. Now the, the most violent city in the world is Tijuana with 138 uh, murders per 100,000 inhabitants. That's almost one third that we had, so it was very bad. Medellin has a very strong corporate sector. We have six of the 10 biggest companies in Colombia. Uh, we have the biggest bank, Bank Colombia. We have the biggest insurance company, Suramericana, that is 
is expanding in Latin America and is one of the biggest insurance companies in Latin America. Argos is for cement and concrete. Uh, ESA is a company for energy distribution. And some of, of you may know or some don't, but um, most of the energy in Sao Paulo is distributed by a company that ESA owns called, um, I, it's ESA, uh, I forgot the, the name in the, the company in Sao Paulo, but it's, um, it's from ESA. Grupo Argos, Grupo Nutresa, these are very big companies as well. So how do we get to appear in the headlines of the news like cocaine country, kings of the cocaine, the evil empire, and we got to be like this kind of, of headlines in the news. So how was this possible? That's the power to transform. Key aspects for the transformation of Medellin. Security policies are very important. And the peace process that Colombia had with paramilitary groups back in 2005 and with the guerrillas of FARC in 2018 and 16, um, that took arms of the people like uh, more than 15,000 uh, fighters at not on the streets anymore, not in the countryside of Colombia. So you have here the stick and here the carrot, as we said in Spanish, you have to enforce the law, but you have to give opportunities to the people. So social and urban inclusion, collaborative intelligence, open innovation, knowledge economy, and long-term city plan. So one good thing about Medellin is that in 2003, very important people from the city started to get together to think about the future of, of the city. These people, it uh, comes from the private companies, from the academy, the universities, and of course the government. But I'm, this committee, is called Comité Universidad de Empresa Estado, has been meeting since 2003, religiously every, uh, the first uh, Friday of every month, and the people who go there are the CEOs of the companies, the owners of the companies, the mayor, and the principal of the, of the universities. So there is a space for intelligence, collaborative intelligence, and people with a lot of power that can change things. So Comité Universidad Empresa Estado is very important in the beginning of the change of the city. From Comité Universidad Empresa Estado, it was the idea that if you have a plan to move the economy from traditional to knowledge-based economy, you need an institution that has to lead this transformation. So in 2009, 10 years ago, Ruta N was born as an innovation center and the institution that has to uh, articulate the innovation, science and technology ecosystem. So from Ruta N, we developed a plan, a science, technology and innovation plan for the city from 2011 to 2021 to move the traditional economy to knowledge-based economy. The most important thing is this plan was approved by the city council. So it doesn't depend on the mayor in turn. It doesn't depend on the government. The mayor that comes to, to power in Medellin has to complain with this kind of, of uh, plan. Why knowledge economy? More jobs, better paid, and better, better quality life for the people. So we are aiming that in 2021, we're going to create 30% of the jobs as a result of innovation and investing 1.5 of our GDP in innovation. So in Ruta N, we work with three main um, strategies, attraction of people, companies, and capital, and investment. Uh, development, basically we are an innovation accelerator for um, research groups and startups that are based in innovation. And the N stands for city needs because we believe that innovation has to be done in order to solve real problems. Not just doing research for the sake of doing research, but doing research in order to solve real problems. So in attraction, uh, since 2012, 
we have helped generate more than 7,000 jobs related to innovation, better paid, to 170 companies coming to Medellin to open up operations from 31 countries all over the world. Like when I was a child, I never imagined that in my city, Medellin, we were going to host companies coming from more than 30 countries in the world. That was like a dream, but it's true right now. So we help the companies. If you want to go to start operations in Medellin, Ruta N can help you to do the soft landing in our building, we have co-working space, so we are very flexible for allowing you to have the space for starting the business in, in Medellin, and we connect you with the, the talent that you need, the lawyers that you need to open the, the, um, the company, and the networking for that you need to open your, your operation. So uh, we go from just like desk in a co-working space to help you doing your old tailor-made building if you want. Capital, we attract capital. We have innovation labs for companies, education and government. We work with the government to, uh, through innovation, improve processes and solve city problems. Uh, these are some figures of the innovation lab for education, for government. And as a, uh, as a, uh, Startup Accelerator, the Innovation Accelerator, and we have some, um, some services for them as well. I want to move forward a little bit. We have a lot of um, um, communities that they do meetups in Ruta N based on different technologies and software. So a lot of companies, even Microsoft, work with Ruta N to help develop um, um, these communities. Uh, for that are very good for, for uh, rising talent among the companies. So we have also a great pact for innovation where the leaders of the companies, they commit, they sign a manifesto where they commit to use innovation and move the city from knowledge base, from traditional economy to knowledge base. So we are reheading, and this is very important. We are working in the science, technology, and innovation plan for the next 10 years. We are building another Ruta N, so we have more space for you to come and work in Medellin. And we are building an innovation district that is basically for neighborhoods that are going to host science, technology, and innovation companies and uh, research groups. This is very important. Medellin, the last 30th of April, uh, opened the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution associated with the World Economic Forum. Um, this is important. I'm going to show you a video, please, if you can play it. It was just three weeks ago that we opened the center. He's the director of the centers of the World Economic Forum, or president, or mayor. So why is this important? Because for, uh, for, for industrial revolution comes with a lot of technologies that are growing very fast. And the challenge for the government is to produce regulations and laws for these new technologies. And there is two scenarios, two scenarios right now. Or you don't have regulation and laws for the new technologies, or the regulations that are in place prevent the technology to be adopted and to develop new business. So what the World Economic Forum is doing is being proactive, studying this kind of technologies and producing regulations and laws that allow the government to embrace the technologies to produce more opportunities for development and new jobs and a blossoming economy based on technology. 
So we are very proud that we have this center because there is only other four centers in the world. The main center is in San Francisco, United States, Japan, China, India, and the fifth is uh, in Medellin, and is the, the first one in Latin America. Um, and so, actually, we can work with the other uh, countries in Latin America to, to join efforts to produce regulations and policy that uh, increase the opportunities to embrace and uh, take advantage of the technologies. Talent, we attract talent, new talent. We help people to change their careers. And okay, we are Medellin, the city that has transformed itself. What's our secret? We believe that our secret is the people, the resilience, the hope. We never let all ourselves be defeated by violence. We always were dreaming to be a better city. And I think with a lot of effort and a lot of uh, joint uh, work, we are like getting there, we are still working, and we have a lot to learn from you and to share with you as well. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, these are my, my contact details, so you can write to me and I'll be uh, waiting for you. So I hope you can come to Medellin and see a transformation for yourself, and even better if you want to open a company in Colombia and in Medellin. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado ao nosso palestrante, ao Santiago, e a exposição gostaria de agradecê-lo, presenteando com uma obra do artista Juarez Machado, é uma gravura intitulada Batalha de Confetes, assinada pelo artista e que está sendo conduzida ao palco pelos empresários Gustavo Rindemeyer e Douglas Estrelov. Ópera apresenta Expogestão.